Hello and welcome to this video lecture series on microwave tubes. In this video, we will discuss about a another microwave tube which is a reflex clistron. Reflex clistron is basically used as a low power microwave oscillator. By the time we had discussed about two cavity and multi cavity clistron amplifier. So one may ask a question why can't we use these two cavity clistron or multi cavity clistron amplifiers as a microwave oscillator by satisfying Barkhausen's criteria, maintaining the phase shift and the closed loop gain A beta should be greater than or equal to 1 and phase shift between input and output should be in multiple of 2 pi. So uh, it is obvious that one could make the microwave oscillator with the help of two cavity and multi cavity clistron amplifiers but when there is a requirement of variable frequencies to be generated at the output of this microwave oscillator there should be necessary changes to be done in the resonant frequency of each cavity and feedback path phase shift has to be readjusted to maintain the positive feedback. So because of this reflex cliston oscillator is very much popular single cavity uh, microwave oscillator to be used in generally in microwave laboratories and as a low power microwave oscillator in uh, microwave receivers. So let us talk about the constructional details of reflex cliston oscillator. This has got a single cavity and the principle of velocity modulation is again applicable for reflex cliston oscillator. So repeller is going to play an important role in the operation of this reflex cliston oscillator. As we know that electrons would be generated from cathode. So this is the beam supply voltage given to the cathode and there is another supply voltage in the reflex clistron tube is called as a repeller voltage. So that is given to repeller and output has been taken from this cavity at the top. Grid spacing is again small d and the distance between repeller and the cavity is capital L. So this is the repeller space. Anodes are again used for the purpose of focusing electron beam. So these are the constructional details for reflex cliston oscillator and we could also make a time distance scale and we will again recall this when we do the mathematical analysis of reflex cliston tube. So at time instance t0 electrons will enter into the cavity and that distance we will call at some reference distance 0. Electrons will come out at the time instance t1 and they would have traveled the distance small d. Once electrons entered into the repeller uh, or drift space and traveling towards repeller, so they will travel with some change velocity v of t1 and as they move towards repeller, some of the electrons may uh, go little deeper depending on their velocity and some may not go that much deeper in the drift space and as they experience the same negative potential because electrons are negatively charged carriers and if they do experience the same potential negative potential from this repeller uh, point so they will repel back or rather they reflect back to the cavity that is why the name reflex clistron so they come back at time instance t2 and they would have traveled the distance if they reach to the repeller l the capital l plus the grid spacing distance d l plus d would be the distance they would have traveled but when they come back to the cavity they uh, have traveled the distance l plus twice of d if they enter the cavity so these are the constructional details of reflex crystal oscillator now try to understand how this single cavity tube is going to generate microwave oscillations so we know that when electrons are being started from cathode because 
uh, we have given some DC supply voltage V0. So depending on the amplitude of this voltage, electrons would be traveling with some velocity V0, which we have discussed in our two cavity crystal amplifier case. So with the uh, velocity V0, electrons will enter the buncher cavity. And because of the RF signal, which is being actually present uh, due to the noise in this particular tube, so electrons will interact with that RF signal based on the amplitude of that RF signal some electrons will accelerate their velocity some of them will decelerate their velocity and with the modulated velocity they will come out of the cavity so once they come out of the cavity as i said they experience the negative potential and they come back to the cavity so there is the specific arrangement when they uh, come back to the cavity and if they interact with the maximum positive peak so they will give up their kinetic energy in form of the electromagnetic energy so to understand this concept let us consider this uh, apple gate diagram of reflex klystron so this is the cavity gap voltage which is present in the cavity and this is the distance from gap and these are the electrons at different time instances which had came out of the cavity with different velocities so b is the reference electron at time instance some b there is reference electron which will travel towards the repeller with same velocity v0 electron at time instance a uh, is actually interacting with the positive peak of the rf signal so they would be accelerated so their velocity would be maximum than that of the reference velocity v0 and the electron at time instance c will be interacting with the negative peak of the RF signal so they would uh, travel with little slower velocity in comparison to the V0. So the detailed discussion on velocity modulation we have done during our two cavity crystal amplifier. So if you are interested you can go back and watch that particular video. Okay. So some electrons will accelerate some will decelerate and they will would go towards the repeller and came again they will came back to the cavity at particular uh, distance and there would be the bunch of electrons because of the change in the modulation uh, change in the velocity of the electrons the cavity uh, dimensions and repeller voltages uh, are being adjusted in such a way that when electrons will come back in the bunch if they interact with the positive peak uh, of the rf signal so during this cycle they will give up their kinetic energy in form of the electromagnetic energy and the output can be taken from this cavity and that is called as the microwave signal is being generated so this will happens only once in the cycle let us consider this diagram one more time this is the reference point so from here we'll start to uh, measure so this is one cycle negative peak and positive peak so this is one cycle then half cycle and quarter cycle so one plus three by four so again this uh, at this instant output would be generated and during next positive peak again electrons will come back in bunch and they will uh, give up their kinetic energy in form of electromagnetic energy so we will get output during the next positive peak so this will happen only once in the cycle and that way the number of modes of reflex crystal oscillator can be uh, understood so this is one three by four mode then next to that we have a two three by four mode why one three by four once again i will try to uh, explain this from here we'll try to measure this is one cycle negative and positive then we have half and one quarter so one cycle plus three fourth of that cycle that is called as a one three by four mode the first uh, instance where positive peak is there but at such there will not be any electron returning back at this particular time so this 3 by 4 mode ideally we uh, do not consider where small n is equal to 0 i will let you know about uh, details of these modes in my subsequent video on the uh, replace cliston oscillator but the highest output mode is 1 3 by 4 mode because sufficient number of electrons will return back and they will produce the maximum output from that reflex liston oscillator so if you see the power versus frequency relationship of reflex liston oscillator 
so this can be plotted in the way which you can see now <coughs> so on x axis we have a repeller voltage if we vary the repeller voltage we will get the different modes okay so this is the first mode we can see one three by four mode for uh, certain ranges of repeller voltages we do not get output and reason is that uh, electrons are not coming back at that particular instance in bunches or in other words they are not giving up their kinetic energy uh, in not converting their kinetic energy into the electromagnetic energy that is why we are not getting continuous output from the reflex klystron so after uh, next peak would appear next peak means if you extend this apple gate diagram in this fashion so this is the first case if you get uh, the output at this positive peak again when the next positive peak will come you will get the output so this cycle would be continuing and we will get the different modes or you can say uh, higher order modes with the variation in repeller voltages again for some time when uh, there is a no positive peak we don't get any output next time if we get in a positive peak we'll get the output from the reflex list on oscillator so on y axis it is power output in milliwatts and on x axis we have varied the repeller voltage so the way uh, we have plotted the graph between output power and repeller voltage is that if we keep on changing the repeller voltage and uh, make a note of this this repeller voltage in uh, negative this is the negative voltage you can see from the schematic diagram of reflex piston oscillator this is negative potential and if we actually increase this voltage from negative value towards zero so the output power reduces or in other words if the mode number is increasing from one three by four 2 3 by 4 3 3 by 4 output power is reducing so the mathematical derivation why we are getting lesser power for higher order modes that we will be going to derive in our next video other important part for this uh, power frequency relationship is that again on x axis we have a repeller voltage and on y axis we have a frequency measured in gigahertz so as we uh, have seen that as the number of mode uh, is increasing output power will reduces but at the same time if you calculate the bandwidth how to calculate the bandwidth for the different modes of reflex crystal oscillator uh, we have a separate playlist of microwave labs so in that you can actually uh, understand how these characteristics can be obtained in the laboratory and how bandwidth can be plotted for the different modes of the reflex crystal oscillator there i have explained all these things with the lab readings so uh, if you are interested you can please uh, watch that video so you will understand as if the mode number is going to increase output power will reduces and the bandwidth for that if you calculate bandwidth for this mode this mode and the third one mode so the highest bandwidth you will get for the 3 3 by 4 mode the bandwidth of 2 3 by 4 mode would be lesser than this mode and the first mode which has actually the highest output power its bandwidth will be smallest or the uh, uh, minimum as compared to the other higher order modes so if you increase the number of uh, uh, mode that is small n if you increase that integer you increase from one to uh, this is actually n equal to two mode how it is n equal to two again i will discuss this in my upcoming video because it's theoretical uh, operation we are trying to understand about reflex list on oscillator so here small n which is a positive integer is equal to 2 then we have n equal to 3 and n equal to 4 as integer we are increasing or mode number capital L uh, capital N is from 1 3 by 4 to 2 3 by 4 3 3 by 4 mode output power will reduces but the bandwidth for the mode is going to increase so that is what we have to understand from the power frequency relationship of a reflex klystron oscillator so this is about the theoretical details of reflex klystron oscillator its uh, uh, constructional details and uh, power versus frequency relationship of reflex klystron oscillator so that's all for this video thank you